take a look at oxidation and oxidation reduction reactions or redox reactions. So we'll mention it, you know, go over it really briefly here in, in Chem 1, and then when you get to Chem 2, we'll look at this again. So this will come up again. So oxidation is when you are losing electrons, uh, and reduction is when you gain electrons. If one species in the reaction is losing electrons, somebody else is picking them up and they're going to gain the, the electrons. So you can't really have one without the other. So if something's being oxidized, something else is being reduced. So assigning oxidation numbers is a really good way to keep track of who's gaining electrons and who's losing electrons. All right, so we're going to go over some, some rules on how to determine oxidation numbers. So if you want to know if an oxidation re reduction reaction occurred, then you can calculate the, or you can just assign the oxidation numbers for each species and see how they're changing. Or if they're changing. If they don't change, then a reaction didn't, then an oxidation reduction reaction didn't occur, or redox reaction. So what are the rules for assigning oxidation numbers? If you have an element in its elemental form, the oxidation number is going to be zero. So what does that mean? What is the elemental form of um, magnesium? Just looks like magnesium, right? That's just solid. So that has an oxidation number of, of zero. Um, if you had something like hydrogen in its elemental form, that's H2. That also has an oxidation number of zero. Um, if you have an ion, then the oxidation number is the same as the charge in the ion. So if I had something like magnesium ion, it would have that would have a plus two um, oxidation number. So if I, I had a reaction, I had magnesium on one side, magnesium on the other side, but I had magnesium solid on uh, on the left as a reactant with an oxidation number of zero, and then on the product side, I have magnesium two plus. Obviously, this is not a balanced reaction; we have to balance the electrons. But if I had an oxidation number of magnesium on the left of zero, and then it's going turning into plus two, the oxidation number is increasing in this reaction. Um, and so this is in an oxidation, right? Somebody's losing electrons. So if I lose electrons, I lose something negative, I become more positive. So that would be an example of an oxidation. If it was reversed, if I went from you know, magnesium to plus, it might be easier to see it this way, going down to magnesium solid, right? I went from plus two to zero. That number is decreasing. Um, that's a reduction. It's going from plus plus two to zero, right? Now I'm gaining electrons. If I gain, if I had two things and then um, I gain two negative things, my, my oxidation number is going to go down. So if the number increases, it's oxidation. If the number decreases, it's reduction. Um, so those are just two examples of how you get uh, two of the rules for assigning oxidation numbers. If it's just in its elemental form, the oxidation number is zero. If it's an ion or it's in an ionic compound, then it's just the oxidation number is the charge um, of the ion. Other rules, and these are in order of importance, so follow rule one before two before three. Um, the oxidation number of a monatomic ion, or that's got that one. Nonmetals tend to be uh, tend to have negative oxidation numbers. So remember where your um, where your nonmetals are. Nonmetals are you know up here on the right hand side. Your metals are down here. So those nonmetals tend to have oxidation numbers um, that are negative, except um, there are a couple exceptions when you're bonding with oxygen. So oxygen likes to be um, negative two except if it's in a peroxide, then it's negative one, or if it's just in its elemental form, right, like that, then it's gonna be zero. So usually when you see oxygen, think negative two. We don't really see a lot of peroxides, but oxygen will be, have a negative two oxidation number, um, again, or zero, or if it's with a peroxide. Hydrogen likes to be plus one when it's with a non-metal, or negative one when it's with a metal. So metals like to be positive. So if you have, hydrogen can change depending on if it's with a non-metal or a metal. And then fluorine always has an oxidation number of negative one, unless it is, um, you know, in its elemental form, then it's zero. Fluorine likes to be negative one. Um, yep. And, but the other halogens can have positive oxidation numbers if they're with a whole bunch of oxygen. So if we had something like um, HClO3, we can figure out the oxidation number of chlorine. It's probably going to be positive in that case because you have so many oxygens and oxygens are minus two. And then this final rule is that all the oxidation numbers have to add up to zero. So we can we can actually see some positive um, oxidation numbers for some of the halogens in those situations when you have a whole bunch of oxygen. That's like an exception. They, they usually like to be negative except when they're with a whole bunch of oxygen because ox you follow the oxygen rule before the halogen rule. So add up all the oxidation numbers in a neutral compound, and they should be zero. If you add up all the oxidation numbers 
in an ion, a polyatomic ion, that sum of all the oxidation numbers has to equal the charge on the ion. So those are the rules. They don't make any sense until you start doing some problems. So let's do a couple of these problems. So what's the oxidation state of the bold-faced element uh, in each of these? So here, let's start with P, P2O5. So the sum, let's go to you know, rule number four that says the sum of all the oxidation numbers in a neutral compound is zero. So if I want to figure out what P is, I must have a rule for oxygen. I have two phosphorus. I'm going to set up like a little algebra problem here. 2P plus 5O has to equal zero. Um, all right, so I don't know what P is. So 2P plus 5. Now I have a rule for oxygen. The the oxidation state of oxygen, um, the oxidation number is going to be minus 2, because this is not a peroxide, just P2O5, and they all have to add up to 0. I know that the charge is 0 because there's no charge written here, so if there's no charge here, then 0 uh, is right here. This is oxygen. This number, this is a 0. They look they look the same, but just so you're not confused, that's five. it's not 5 times 0, it's 5 times whatever the oxidation number is for oxygen, which happens to be negative 2. So I have 2p minus 10 equals 0. All right, so I'm going to add 10 to both sides. And I have 2p equals 10 divided by 2, and I get p is 5, plus 5. All right, that's the oxidation number of phosphorus. That's like the long way to do it. Um, right, you, you can go back and check. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 5 times negative 2 right that all adds up to zero 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 um, for this one sodium hydride so if you look up here you say right what rules am I following this is a metal with hydrogen well when hydrogen is with a non-metal it's negative one when it's with a metal um, sorry when hydrogen is with a non-metal it's positive one when it's with a metal it's negative one so this guy is negative one sodium is a group one metal so it likes to be plus one so this kind of makes sense so hydrogen here is negative one so sodium plus hydrogen has to equal zero sodium likes to be plus one so suppose you didn't know that rule right now I guess subtract one so hydrogen has to be negative one has eight don't make this one harder than it has to be you just have sulfur in there there's no charge this is just the molecular form of sulfur so it's going to be zero no math involved now down here throw it over that one just erase that for a second um we have cr207 so you can pause the video and try to do this one by yourself or not seven times oxygen the rule for oxygen is likes to be negative two and this all has to equal negative 2. Now this 2 comes from this charge, right? So the sum of all the oxidation numbers has to equal the charge. This is the first one that we have that actually has a charge. is a polyatomic ion. Um, so make sure you don't set that to 0. You want to set it equal to the charge. And this 2 comes from the oxygen rule. So 2 times chromium minus 14 equals negative 2. Add 14 to both sides. I get 2 times chromium equals 12 divide by 2, and chromium is equal to plus 6. Uh, this one, Sn, is 4 times Br equals 0. Okay, so I don't know what tin is. It can change. Bromine. So where's bromine? It's a non-metal. Non-metals like to be um, halogen, so the halogen it likes to be negative 1. Non-metals like to be negative, that's what I was trying to say, but um, bromine, because it's a halogen, likes to be negative 1. So I have Sn minus 4 equals 0. Add 4 to both sides. And this metal is positive, which makes sense. And the last one, I have S plus 2 times chlorine equals 0. And again, it's 0 because there's no charge here. Chlorine likes to be negative 1 because um, it's not with a whole bunch of oxygen, so S minus 2 equals 0, add 2, so sulfur is plus 2 here. There's a bunch more of these for homework. They're almost fun. You may have found that you were almost having fun. Uh, just set up the little math problem and solve. The biggest mistakes, people forget to add the um, charge on the polyatomic ion. If it's neutral, it's 0. If it's an ion, then add that charge. 
and then if it's in its molecular form just make it zero yeah cool